Greetings. How are you doing? I guess this is as good a place as any to clip that, right? There we go! Wearing a sleeveless hoodie. The ultimate in slumming wear. You're slumming it. You know you're slumming it when you're wearing a sleeveless hoodie. Um, greetings. You know, the one question I get asked over and over again, so I guess I have to make a video, obviously so, is uh, comparing the Fujifilm X-T3 Nikon D500. I used to have three Nikon D500s. Uh, one of them I got for free and I fixed it because a guy dropped it in the creek. Anyway, I can honestly say, unequivocally, that I've shot the ever-loving hell and gone out of both of these cameras, including that of the X-T2, its predecessor. Comparing and contrasting which ones to get. You love it when someone drives down the street and they're like driving one of those cars that like doesn't have a muffler, it sounds obnoxiously noisy. Welcome to the United States of America. <laughs> this is the only place that I know of where people actually take pride in driving obnoxiously loud vehicles. It's like, ah, I'm driving an energy efficient car that only gets two miles to the gallon, and uh, it sounds like the uh, car is passing gas from a night of eating broccoli. Uh, <laughs> excuse me. I hate it when cars like that go down the road. Um, it's also the same reason why I hate Harley Davidson, American made piece of crap. You know the difference, I'm sorry, I'm slightly off topic here. You know the difference between uh, an American made Harley Davidson piece of crap? Now I would love it if good things were made in America. A few things still are, not many. And the reason for that is Americans are taught they should go to college rather than learning how to build things and fix things or become machinists. And like a good Japanese motorcycle is that when you ride a Japanese motorcycle, and I used to ride motorcycles, they sound like this, okay? This is this is what a Harley Davidson sound like. Also brand new, okay, right off the factory floor. <laughs> and they leak oil. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I really hate American-made vehicles and uh, Harley Davidsons. Yeah. Did I, I'm sorry. That was really off topic. You're like, get to the point. I'm watching this video regarding the Fujifilm X-T3 Nikon D500. Let me be succinct. Having a great deal of experience with both of these cameras. Right now, there's a Nikon D500 filming my face. But the Nikon D500 is certainly not for video. I mean, when I actually use the D500 for making my videos, I focus on this point in the table. It's single autofocus. I don't have to worry about it actually focusing and uh, acquiring focus because the camera's no damn good for that. So the camera's no damn good for video. Also too, the X-T3 here in about two and a half weeks is gonna get a major firmware update for uh, face and eye detect autofocus, which is gonna make it somewhere about 400% better. And there've already been demonstrations with the X-T30, which currently has that firmware for uh, eye detect that it is better than that of uh, Sony, which is amazing because the one thing even I praised uh, Sony cameras for, even though I despise, you know, the poorly made overheating Sony junk boxes, is that they actually have incredibly good eye autofocus. So Fujifilm has finally beat them on that front. Isn't that wonderful? Um, the X-T3 issues in comparing and contrasting these two cameras. The X-T3, um, I don't know if there's really an issue. The, the buffer is actually quite deep on the X-T3. That's assuming, of course, you got a pair of 300 megabit per second SanDisk cards, which is the only thing you should feed this camera. Let's be honest, if you're using anything else, you're really making a mistake. It is not as deep as that on the Nikon D500. Obviously so, the XQD cards and the D500 has a significantly better buffer depth. If you want to be ripping them off for sports action, wildlife, or photojournalism, it does have a deeper buffer. XQD cards are damn fast, even though they're obnoxiously expensive and becoming harder and harder to find. The X-T3, even though I have the 200 millimeter F2 Fujifilm lens and the 100 to 400, which is really nice wildlife lens, even Fujifilm will admit this. They do not have the ultra hardcore glass that Nikon has. 400 28, 300 200 500 Nikkor. The Fuji is kind of an equivalent to that, or a 600 millimeter of four. I mean, they just don't. How often do you see somebody out with a 400 28 or 500 f4 or 600 f4? Not very often, but if you want to do really hardcore keyword, hardcore sports action wildlife, I mean, that's the glass, and obviously Fujifilm does not have that. 
However, it is the case that the Fringer adapter, which I hear it works great, there's currently a Canon version, they're working on the Nikon version, will let you do autofocus with these uh, Canon lenses, I mean with these Nikkor lenses on the Fujifilm. They already exist for uh, a Canon adapter. My buddy is getting that adapter and testing it. All reports are that it works wonderfully. That's a Fringer autofocus interface adapter for Canon autofocus glass. The X-T3, as I've actually stated before, is the ultimate do-it-all camera, even over that of the Nikon D850, which is certainly so the best do-it-all uh, DSLR ever made by anybody. X-T3 is not ideal, and people always attack me for this. It's like, did you listen to what I said? I use the word ideal. Kind of like my RAV4, which is an SUV. It's perfectly fine for off-road driving, right? But it's not ideal. What's ideal for that is stuff made specifically for off-road driving. Yeah, so ideal means ideal. The X-T3 is not the most ideal camera in the world for landscape and portraiture. I mean, it's just not. I mean, but that's what the GFX is for. Um, that uh, field of view. Obviously, so the portraiture lenses like the 5612 exist, and they have the exact same uh, bokeh as an 85mm f1.8 at f1.8, but it is still not an ideal camera. Neither is the D500. They're both crop sensor cameras. Um, so saying that, but that's, that's the limit of uh, the criticism I have for the X-T3. As so far as the Lancon D500, one undeniable issue, and I've said that since day one, is there's a clipping issue on the highlights on the D500. It has really good high ISO performance. By the way, the high ISO performance is even slightly better than that on the X-T3. It's a BSI sensor, and it does have better dynamic range, the X-T3 does, than the Nikon D500. The only thing I actually have to complain about the Nikon D500, other than video, which I don't give a damn about video. I don't give a damn. I've said that since day one. But, I mean, I know the differences and it can and com uh, compare and contrast the two. The X-T3 blows the Nikon D500 away and hell and gone, run circles around it many times over for video use. Um, but the clipping issues in the D500 is, uh, is a bit of a problem. I mean... You know, instead of uh, sticking things in positive territory on exposure compensation on every camera that I have, i got to do just the opposite with the D500, especially in high contrast, high dynamic range sh shots. Uh, the XQD cards are damn expensive. Um, Delkin is starting to uh, produce XQD cards, but um, Nikon is getting away from that. They're actually going to issue firmware updates for the D500, D850, Nikon D5, and a few other cameras. Because they're the exact same size and shape, they're going to issue a firmware update so you can use compact flash express cards in these cameras. Um, like I said, inferior video by miles and miles over that of the X-T3. Lack of face and eye detect autofocus. Well, I mean, there's face detection. Nowhere near that of the X-T3 as it currently exists, much less the firmware update that the X-T3 is going to get here in two, two and a half weeks. It could be three weeks. It's going to be in April as already stated by Fujifilm. D500 definitely is the still, even though that, over that of the Nikon uh, D850, even over that of the Nikon D5, which is wonderful, however obnoxiously expensive. Nice uh, 20 megapixel full frame sensory camera, independent to autofocus, does have faster autofocus, not by much, but uh, D500 is still the ultimate hardcore, I use the word hardcore, sports action wildlife camera. I mean, this, the Nikon D500, has been and continues to be the wet dream camera of uh, bird photographers, for example, period. The glass, you I mean, you slap a 200, 500 Nikkor on this, oh man, you just go all day long, so happy. Um, even over that on the Nikon D850, I mean, the buffer depth on the D850, not only are the files absolutely tremendous, by the way, did I mention before, yes, I have, that the file size on lossless 14-bit uh, compressed RAWs is exactly the same size as on my GFX medium format. D850 files are huge. They're obnoxiously huge. Nor does it have the buffer depth because the files are so damn huge over that of the Nikon D500. Uh, um, those are really the only points to compare and contrast the two. Um, as I've said in a video about two months or so ago that I personally consider uh, undeniably so that uh, I think, and you could disagree with me, I don't give it a care one way or the other because I don't sell anything, nor do I have affiliate links, that the single best all-around do-it camera for everything, even though it doesn't have, you know, many of the really, really hardcore big-ass glass, but most of you don't use that. 
I've got it too, but you know, I haven't used my, well, actually I did recently use it, but most of you aren't going to use that, so most of you don't care, but it is the single best all-around camera. It's made me the most happy of any camera ever, and it's only $1,500. Nikon D500 was $2,000. I mean, you can get it used now for about $1,200, and a new one now is, what, $1,600. So $1,500, $1,600, both are, these are both essentially, roughly so, the same price. Roughly, okay? Um... I gotta love the X-T3. The only real bitch I have about the D500 is the clipping issue due to uh, foreshortened dynamic range, but it is the highest so performer. And it's one hell of a fine camera. Both of these are two of my favorite digital cameras of all time. Right with my favorite digital camera of all time, period, regardless of sensor size, is this, the GFX 50R medium format. But Nikon D4, uh, Nikon D500, X-T3, um, X-T2, which the X-T3 is just an evolution of the X-T2, so you lump them all together, there together, X-T2, X-T3. Um, uh, those are really my top five favorite cameras of all time. Three of them, which are sitting right here on the table. GFX 50R, Nikon D500, X-T3, Nikon D4. What would be the fifth camera? I've said it before, but, uh... For some reason, it escapes. It, Nikon D850, there we go. That's that's the top five. So anyway, I hope you like this video. I can I can speak with greater surety on comparing and contrasting these two because I've shot the piss out of both of them. I got a lot of clicks on both these cameras. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. I don't sell anything, and I want you to be happy, and I mean that truly, you know. I might be a bit of an asshole or a bit strange, but uh, I, I like people to be happy, you know? I don't have any agenda up my skirt. That's a proverbial saying. I don't own a skirt, by the way. Say, I don't have any agenda up my skirt. Um, that's an American saying, by the way, you know, in case you're wondering. Maybe I should have said kilt. I do have a kilt. I don't wear my kilt. It was sent to me does give you good ventilation, though. I did wear it once, but I didn't wear it out. <laughs> it's good ventilation. <laughs> yeah. And there's nothing wrong with good ventilation. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you like these videos, click the link below because I don't sell anything. Tell me how much you can't stand me or whatever tickles your pickle. Okay? Peace out, Girl Scout.